Welcome to worship at Augustana, where Lutherans and Anglicans worship together. Today is our Remembrance Day service. And just as on Sunday mornings when we worship in the church building, there are many people who make it possible for us to worship together. And it is the same when we're online. And uh, I put the thank yous at the end of our service. Let's begin our time together by singing our hymn number 700, Bring Peace to Earth. As we begin our time of worship, we ask that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us. Amen. Now, 
there are many things for us to remember. Um, the times tables, remember to eat your vegetables, and um, I have a, a daily alarm. Let me see if I can make it play. Well, that alarm goes every day round about five o'clock, and it's to remind me that I have to go home before it gets dark. If I have the car, because I can't drive in the dark. So that alarm helps me to remember something very important. So why do we remember? We remember, well, we really want to remember the important stuff. And on November 11th, we remember, well, I remember all the stories of elders who have lived and served during times of war. But also on November 11th, we remember so that we can, well, so that we can make sure that we are peacemakers in our world, starting at home and at school, at work and play, whatever teams we're on, in everything we do. So that peacemaking and justice overtake war and conflict. So today we also um, mark Remembrance Day, although the day is now past. But let us begin with a word of prayer. Almighty God, we pause in silence to remember all who died that we might live, all who endured pain that we might know joy, all who suffered harsh imprisonment that we might know freedom. We recall all who by sea, land, and air laid down their lives to rid the world of tyranny. May the sacrifice of so many men, women, and children inspire us to live for peace and to care for those maimed by war. For the sake of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will, will remember, remember them. them. A reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of night or darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing our gospel, Alleluia. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25 beginning at verse 14. Glory to you, O Lord. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I've made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. 
So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, these are very harsh words from the Gospel of Matthew. Well, that's kind of the way Matthew is. Uh, Weeping and gnashing of teeth comes up seven times in the New Testament. And six of those times are in the Gospel of Matthew. And the the violence of, of the phrase calls our attention to how important this message is. In a way, you could say it's um, kind of like a a literary device. It's a bit, just a little bit, like children's stories uh, about monsters that are designed to help children make safe choices. Kind of like the uh, Calipiluit in Inuit folklore. And uh, the Calipiluit's purpose, they're a terrible monster, and, and it's supposed to um, warn children off of thin ice because the calipillot will come and drag them under the ice. So it's a way, it's a scary way, uh, to make sure that the children didn't go on to the thin ice. Well, so Matthew is dramatically pointing out how important it is to make good choices, to be a, to be a good slave, a good servant. And I think that's very fitting as we mark Remembrance Day, to make good choices so that there is no weeping and gnashing of teeth through war and conflict. Now, as I read through this parable of Jesus, um, I tend to put myself in the place of the least servant. And I ask myself, well, What does it matter? Why even try? Why bother? And in our own time, I think that's often a question we ask ourselves. Why try to be a peacemaker in this world of ours? Why bother? Let's just dig a hole and hope for the best. And yet we long for peace and security. Many, many years ago, when I was in elementary school, we, we always played baseball. And I was terrible. Really, really terrible. There was no hope of me ever connecting the bat to the ball. I mean, looking back, I probably should have been wearing glasses a lot sooner than I did. But I learned if I just held the bat up there, and I could let the balls whiz by, and I would likely get to walk to first base. My guess is the picture could have had new glasses as well. But just by standing there and doing nothing, I managed to stay in the game. And that's kind of like burying the money, doing nothing and hoping for the best. Well, so way back when, why did I just stand there with the bat in my hand and do nothing? Well, I think it's because I was afraid, afraid of being made fun of. And why did the servant bury his share of the loot? Because he was afraid. His fear immobilized him. He was waiting for the other shoe to drop. And so he dug a hole and he hoped for the best. 
Fear is a vital response. Um, fear is really what makes it possible for us to react to dangerous situations and to protect ourselves. Um, but fear has good purposes, but fear can also be very destructive. Anyways, there are three, three at least three responses to fear. Um, fight, flight, or freeze. And fight, whether it's fists or words, it's still a fight. And um, I think of the election in the U.S. these last few days and the reaction of those who are unwilling to let go of power. And I think, well, at the root of that is fear. Fear of losing their place in the world. And fear is often at the root of disagreements in churches and other organizations. When you look deeper into the situation of, of conflict, it often boils down to fear. I'm afraid we'll run out of money. I'm afraid the church will have to close or the lodge or the organization. I'm afraid that something precious to me will disappear. And then there's flight. And flight is run as fast as you can in the opposite direction. Kind of like, I'm afraid I can't live up to what's expected of me and so I'm just gonna flee in the opposite direction from what seems to be too difficult. Now the freeze response is a little bit less obvious. It's much more of an invisible response, and it's meant to be. If I stay still and do nothing, I will be invisible, and the thing that is causing my fear will go away. It is a much more subtle response, but it can also be a very damaging response to fear. It is the, why bother? So should we give in to fear? Well, no, but I think it's, it's good to examine our fear, to look at what makes us afraid, to dig it up. Because I think if we do that, we might actually be able to make use of what we fear. And we can use that fear to care for family, church, friends, and neighbors. If we look, well, we will look at that more closely next week as we continue to read through the Gospel of Matthew. But when we actually use our fear, we're no longer a passive bystander. We are and can be active peacemakers, active caregivers. I think especially in this time of pandemic, to recognize our fears of infection for ourselves and our loved ones, but to not let those fears immobilize us. To use our fears to find safe and creative ways to care for one another. At the Remembrance Day prayer service, in Ottawa, um, in the, the prayer, there was a, a phrase that stuck in my mind. Hope comes through caring for the vulnerable. Let us pray. Almighty God, walk with us in our fear. Give us the peace and courage to act despite that fear. In hope, teach us how to care for one another. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. No.
As we mark Remembrance Day, when the stain of war is ever before us, and the memory of sacrifice and loss is present with us, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Almighty God, we are people of clay, molded and mended by our societies and cultures, formed in ways that misshape us from the work of your hands. Forgive us for the ways in which we have judged others by our standards and not by yours. When our notions of justice and peace fall short of your standards of pure justice and holy righteousness. Forgive us for creating and perpetuating conflict both within the borders of our community and countries and across the borders of others. We have become people of words and not actions. Others have perished while we have stood by. Forgive us for our inaction and bless us to become people of living justice and not just bystanders. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, renew our spirits and our hearts that we may seek and serve you in newness of life. May God strengthen us, empower us, and forgive us. And we are reminded 
that by grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Let us join our hearts and voices together in prayer. Each short prayer will end with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and you can make the prayer your own by responding, hear our prayer. Longing for Christ's reign to, become, to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of the church, ignite your people with the passion of, of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. We pray for the Council of the General Synod of the Anglican Church of Canada and the National Church Council of the ELCIC. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Remembering that war is an ever-present reality of this world, let us remember and pray for those whose lives have been touched, shaped, and shattered by it. We pray for people who live in places of war. We pray for the human lives affected by war, for refugees like the Alamad and Wahid and Iqbal families, for displaced persons and those who seek to rebuild their broken nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for worldly leaders, that peace and common good may prevail. We pray for the leaders of every nation and every tribe of this earth. May they see the human cost of their pride and hubris and be humble of heart. Give them the strength to act righteously and to protect the weak and the innocent and the power to prevail over evil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. We remember especially Hannah, Marguerite, Bruce, Gloria, Logan, William, Marcus, Bishop Gomez, Brody, Karen, Anthony, Robert, Curtis, Linda, Marcy, Gail, Evelyn, Lisa, Danielle, Inger, Ann Jane, Deanna, Ron, Marlene, Martha, for those who feel alone and all those we name aloud in or in the silence of our hearts. May they know your healing care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints that rest from their labors. Rouse us to live by their example. The saints yet to come may also know your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Knowing how God loves us as a mother and father, let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your the kingdom, kingdom come, come, your, your will, will be done. done on earth, earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give yes, us today, today our, our daily bread. bread. Forgive, Forgive us our sins, sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Save, Save us from, from the time of trial and, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of God, who is creator, redeemer, and sustainer, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. We do not live, leave in fear, 
we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sending song day by day. <laughs>